Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're mostly going to be putting the cab together as it's now been painted, along with most of the rear bodywork. While we're at it, we'll have a quick look at some of the other changes that we haven't covered. First, you might notice there's a few more wires along the top of the storage boxes. The controller for the lift now has its wires running out from the side of the box, so instead of the power and servo connections running along the inside, they're now out of sight. If we swing the chassis round, we can see one of the cameras has been fitted. It's just a cheap mini security camera from AliExpress with a composite output. It's mounted just with a bit of hot glue behind the plastic. To connect it, there's a length of coax running to the front, which you can see looped up. It's also got a separate power and ground. On the other side, I've started grouping all the wires together. There's still more to add, but the little bit of spiral wrap really does help keep things vaguely in line. The first job for today then is going to be refitting everything to the cab, which is now of course painted. We've got some black and post office red as the main colours with a white stripe. And the inside and bit under the windscreen are matte black. Fairly simple to do and we'll be looking at masking and painting in the next video when we do the doors. When it was taken apart we put all the big bits in a pot so they're easy to find. There's also a few other bits to fit too. We've got the mirrors and the other chrome bits, most of which will need to get glued on, but we're going to wait a while for those bits as they're glued directly to the paint and we want to make sure it's fully hardened first. To fit the mirrors, first we need to attach the surround to the arms with the small screws. We're going to be gluing the mirrors in, so once they're there we won't be able to get at the screws. They don't need to be super tight, just nipped up nicely. If the threads get stripped and the mirrors fall off, it's going to be a right pain to refit them. We will use some more of the poly cement with the small nozzle. We want to run a tiny bead around the inside of the step where the mirror sits. Then offer up the mirror and give it a little bit of a squeeze. The main thing is to be careful of getting the glue on your fingers and transferring it to the mirror. You need to be sure you're keeping your fingers away from the sticky stuff. There's four side mirrors to glue in, plus the blind spot mirrors. Glue them up and let them harden for a few hours. Next, we need to fit the driver to his seat. He's been painted by the truck's owner now, so he's ready to go. Except for his head, which we'll stick on a bit later. To work out where he wants to sit, so he's lined up with the steering wheel, we need to fit the dashboard to the cab and fit it to the chassis. When we remove the dash, we left the screws and nuts in the mounts. So all we need to do is remove them, offer the dash up to the cab, and refit the screws and the nuts. While we're here, we'll also need to refit the rear cab mount to the inside with its four screws. The driver will need to get stuck down to the seat with some servo tape. Now my usual advice applies, use a good quality tape like this fast track stuff. Rather than falling to bits if you need to remove it, it peels off in one go without leaving a mess. For now, we'll just stick it to his um, bottom and leave the backing plastic on. Now we can fit the cab so we know where he needs to sit. There's no windows in yet, so we're going to have plenty of access. We need to hook the rear into its mount, lower the front and fit the two screws. Now we can peel the backing off the tape and feed him in past the wheel. Now there's always a bit of a compromise with the position as we need to be able to remove the cab leaving the driver in the seat. His hands will likely get caught up in the wheel so we'll more than likely need to tweak things a little bit later. There's still the head to stick on but first I'm going to stick him down a bit more securely. It's a bit of a gamble but I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue to help keep him in position. It's a gamble because it'll be easier if he can move around a bit to get past the steering wheel. If it's a problem, we can always peel the glue off fairly easily, but I reckon it's worth a go. To stick the head on, I'm going to use a spot of Zappa Gap, a medium cyanoacrylate. We only need a tiny spot before carefully positioning his head so he's looking straight ahead. With that done, we need to leave him off to the side to dry. While he's doing his thing, I'm going to reassemble the cab. It's all the same as the dry build a few videos ago. Same screws, same holes. We just need to be careful not to scratch the paint. Sometime later, we have all the windows in, the grills fitted and the roof on the top, which means we're at a bit of a special moment, the Volvo badge. 
Tamiya had provided some really nice chrome stickers with transfer paper, or in this case plastic. Essentially, we need to cut the big Volvo badge from the sheet, then we peel off the transfer plastic with a sticker, we can use a knife or some very thin tweezers to hold it while we line up with the front panel, just be careful not to drop it. You can gently apply it, then very carefully adjust the position so it's spot on. A torch is very handy so you can move the light around to check the shadows. They should be even all the way around. Then we press it down and we peel off the transfer plastic. Across the middle of the badge we're going to need a Volvo lettering. It's rather small and it's on the main sticker sheet so we need to cut it out. Gently stick it to a knife blade, line it up and stick it down. Usually nice and simple but for some reason it pinged off and I thought I'd lost it. After some hunting around, I found it up inside the sun visor. How it got up there, I've got no idea. Luckily, after fishing it out, it went down just fine. So, we have a Volvo badge fitted. Next, we'll fit the rear side windows. It's important that before we stick them on, that the paint has completely dried. We're going to be using some double-sided tape, and if the paint's a bit soft, you're going to see the tape through the plastic. Tamiya provides some really thin tape that we're going to use. We need to cut some thin strips to go around the edge of the window, one small strip on each edge. We don't need to go all the way around though, because we're not trying to seal it, just stick it on. With the backing removed, we can poke a couple of fingers through the hole to stabilise the window as we lower it down to the cab. There's a good chance we'll only get one chance to get it right, so slow and careful is the way. Next up, the top box. It's had the camera mount glued in and it's all been painted black. The light buckets have also had a bit of paint around the chrome surrounds. They were just brush painted with Tamiya paint. There's not going to be much of them visible, so being slightly uneven isn't going to be a problem. Other than fitting the lenses, we've assembled the box before. So we'll glue the lenses in with a smear of poly cement. As usual, I really do mean a very tiny amount. We don't want it to squirt out and make a mess of the chrome. Then it's just a case of letting it dry for a bit, then offering up the lights to the box and installing all the screws. Now in addition to the lights, there's the light bar on the top, which is just attached with a couple of bits of servo tape. And we have the small camera mounted in the middle with its power and video leads coming off to the side. Also, there's a four pin connector in the middle that connects to the work lights. There's nothing to plug them into just yet, but they're ready when there is. The last bit to go on is the front panel, and it's ready to go back on the truck. Next up, the side panels. They should simply offer up to the chassis, but with all the wiring we do need to take care not to trap anything. There's a few more wires to go in yet, but once the last of the wires are routed, I'll pay a bit more attention to strapping them down out of the way. For now, we're just going to need to keep an eye out for the stray wires. Otherwise, it's just like when you first fitted the panels, offer them up and fit all the screws. Then at the back, we have the small screw that goes into the metal bracket to tie it all together. I think we need to add something to break up that sea of red on the top though. The kit includes some stickers, but I think we can do better than that. If you hunt around, there's some pre-cut metal scale diamond plate panels that we might have to invest in. Now I suppose for completeness we should fit the cab so we can see what it all looks like. For now the camera wiring is just going to get tucked up out of the way as it's going to be a while before it gets hooked up. There's also the mess of wires that connects to the MFC. Right now it's a bit of a faff working out which to connect where. Even just getting access is a bit of a pain. So we'll be working on an easier hookup method too at some point in the future. For now we'll put up with it though so we can see what the truck looks like and I think it's coming along quite nicely. There's still some bright work to attach and lots of light lenses, but appearance-wise it's mostly there. Next time we'll look at painting the doors. It's going to be a fairly quick look, but we'll go over what order to mask things up to make an easy job of it. Until then, thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Which reminds me, I'm a little bit behind on the comments. Four or five videos, I think, which really isn't on. I'll go through them as soon as I can. Bye guys!